Hello guys, it's Smok, and today I have decided to make a recipe guide for Shadowlands. It's been a while since I made some guides, so um, I thought this would be a good time to do it. Uh, in this guide we're gonna go over the talents, we're gonna go through the stats, the covenants, legendary, consumables, and then we do a little bit of healing rotation, damage rotation, and then party CDs and tracking your own CDs basically. Uh, also, recently, We've been working very hard on getting a UI and Weegars up for every single um, class and spec. That includes like a tank, a DPS and healer. And it is uh, for Mythic Plus or dungeon uh, du dungeon uh, frames and uh, raid frames as well. So it, it should work for everything now. So all this is available for my Patreons or for my Twitch. And there will be a link in the description. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, let's start with the talent here. For the first row, I like to go to Nero and Ward. And uh, the reason why I don't take Abundance is basically because you would have to throw out so many Rejuvenations that it feels like you wouldn't have time to do anything else. And then on top of that, spam Regrowth. And what I mean by not have time to do anything else, that is uh, you're gonna lose out on damage if you do this. Uh, so Nero and Ward is big tank healing, so definitely uh, worth it. This is also what we played with uh, back in BFA. So you should be, be pretty used to this here. Uh, Nourish. It's not the same Nourish as you were used to play with in PvP at some point in BFA because what Nourish did back then was that it applied a, a missing hot like let's say you put a regrowth up but you didn't have like a rejuvenation up then Nourish would automatically heal and put a rejuvenation but this one only heals however it triples the bonus from your mastery um, but then again you would have to spam so many huts and then start using Nourish uh, which I feel like is just straight up not worth it because if you have a look at the stats here uh, I only have like 10% haste so this is like first season you know like your stats are going to be very low so just wouldn't have time to, to, to play with these so scenario one for the first one the second row here you would either play wild charge or renewal uh, in a lot of dungeons I actually like to play renewal and the reason being is that again the first season your stats are low so a 30% insta heal to yourself every one and a half minute could be very nice but also wild charge could also be very very good to play with because you you could potentially uh, miss out on a bit of damage if you play with renewal let's say there's something you need to dodge then you would have to like run out if you don't have wild charge but if you have wild charge you could just like jump back in uh, in uh, boomkin form for example so either one of these here is a is a good pick for the first season at least uh third row you have either balance affinity or feral affinity guardian affinity is not something you're going to play because that is like defensive only uh and you wouldn't really need this i would say um it's not like there's something like in uh, let's say like Tolle Gore and BFA, it's not like, I don't feel like at the moment there's anything that, that does so much damage that you would need like uh, Guardian Affinity to live, for example. So Balance Affinity is very cool because you now have the Eclipse. That means if you use like two Solar Wrath, then you would get um, Eclipse for Starfire, which is going to increase your crit by tw uh, 20%, and I believe it also increase your um cast time i mean uh, reduce your cast time by eight percent so um like the eclipse is very good and you can do some uh, some very funny stuff with convoke uh the spirits which i'm gonna get into later uh the cool thing about balance affinity is that you get typhoon uh typhoon is not standard anymore so in order to get typhoon you will have to play balance affinity um also there's a lot of dungeons where there is a lot of melee aids, I would say. Uh, like th there's a lot of cases where it's really hard to be in melee and do damage, uh, which make it kind of hard to play feral affinity sometimes. Because, for example, you have uh, the affix storming, you have the affix uh, spiteful. Like storming is basically like in King's Rest, if you me remember that, where there's like these tornadoes uh, in the first boss room, where they're flying all around. It's basically the same with the affix. They just they just spawn all the time, and it's super annoying to be in melee. So with Balance Affinity, you can avoid that. And also, uh, the Spiteful FX, whenever you kill a mob, then uh, the mob will spawn like a Spiteful mob, which is going to fixate a random player. And if it reaches you, then every melee hit will do pretty much like 50% uh, of your uh, HP in one hit. Uh, so Balance Affinity can kind of avoid this. Uh, however, if you're playing with a Puck, 
a, a like a puck group and you take you you, you uh, your tank takes like a lot of damage then it can be really hard to get into chicken form here and then start casting star search or like starfire for example um uh, and and then start healing again it can be really hard to to find time to do that so at that point it could be better to uh, play feral affinity but i will also get into this a little bit later uh for for the fourth row here i would play a heart of the wild just to increase your damage a bit it's uh it's super cool especially if you combine it with con uh, convoke the spirits uh maybe some points you can use mass root uh but mighty bash i only really see this if you're gonna play pvp to be honest for the fifth row i'm picking soul of a forest uh right now and the reason by being is that your mastery is pretty low so cultivation is not as big of a gain as it's probably going to be later in the expansion but uh soul of a forest it is like uh, massive burst healing and stuff like that and once again convoke the spirits uh, can also do some funky stuff with this one for the sixth row um you're basically going to play with spring blossoms i feel like overgrowth is only something you would play in pvp to like instantly hunt people up um in mythic plus you basically like always have the tank hotted up a bit so spring bl spring blossoms just for the extra hot gonna count towards your mastery even though your mastery is a little bit low so it's definitely better than overgrowth or inner peace because tranquility is very very low value in mythic plus and then for the last row here you play photos and feces uh, again you won't have time to spend this many rejuvenations so uh, germination is kind of um kind of yikes to play and flourish i guess that is going to be like a raid talent you you want to play uh however you can actually proc flourish while not even specking into it by playing convoke uh, the spirits if you use convoke the spirits for healing it is rng though so you should not rely on that but uh photos and feces definitely to play here so now for the stats and um, what i actually want to aim for here is haste verse or haste crit uh the reason being is that haste verse is going to grant you it's going to grant you damage and it's going to grant you healing and basically the same with crit right but if you take haste mastery then the mastery is only going to give you pure healing which could also be good like if you just want to do like your uh, your weekly 15s and stuff like that you don't really care too much about damage uh, but i'm all about the min maxing and i really want to do damage as a healer because it can actually save a lot of time during a key and when we try to push for like world first keys and stuff all the damage a healer can do really means a lot uh, but you can see here my stats is a little bit off right now because this is the beta and i haven't really farmed too much gear but um, as you can see like by standard you already have five uh, crit and four mastery um, so so that is also why like my my gear is a little bit off right now as you can see like i have more crit and uh and haste and verse than i picked the mastery but um i'm really gonna go for like full haste verse or full haste crit um here for the first season okay so next up we have the covenants and i'm not really gonna go into details about every single covenant uh because that that would just make the video way too long but uh we could maybe leave that to like a, a video in the future but I will tell you why I picked uh, Night Fae and what you can do with, uh, with Night Fae. So by picking the Night Fae Covenant, you're going to get uh, an ability called Soul Shape, which is basically like a, a teleport. And while you're in the rested area, this is going to be like, uh, you, you can actually stay in this form uh, forever. But uh, if you go in a uh, non-rested area, then uh, it lasts for 12 seconds. While you're in this form, every four seconds, you can do like a teleport like this here. And uh, what is cool about that is that you can actually use it to dodge abilities in dungeon. But if you leave the form before the 12 seconds, you cannot go into the form again um, before the cooldown go goes off. And basically the cooldown is uh, is one and a half minute. So the main reason why we actually pick Night Fae is not because of Soul Shape, because we already have a lot of mobility as a druid. The main reason is because of Convoke the Spirits. So what Convoke the Spirits actually just does is that it casts 12 Druid spells and abilities over 4 seconds. And it will prioritize what kind of form you're in. So let's say that you're not in any form, you're just in a normal shape or a normal form or whatever you call it. Then you will cast, uh, for example, like Regrowth, um, Rejuvenation, uh, Wild Growth and, and whatsoever. Uh, Swift Mance as well. Um, but let's say you go into Boomkin form, then it will prioritize casting Star Search, Star Fall moonfire ref 
uh, it can also cast regrowth. So, so if your party is low HP, then you will not do as much damage as compared to if you top your whole party and then your uh, Convoked Spirits will not cast any regrowth on your party, for example. So this is something to keep in mind when you want to maximize damage. Another cool thing about Convoked Spirits is that while you're not in any shape and you use Convoked Spirits, then you will be throwing out a lot of Swiftmen and stuff. And uh, Soul of a Forest, if you spec into that, then that talent would actually proc by every single Swiftman that you're using. Uh, and then on the last row of your talents, it can also proc Flourish. Uh, but you don't even need to spec into that. You can still play Photosynthesis, but it can still proc your Flourish during Convoke the Spirits. Okay, so together with um, the Covenant, then comes the Soulbinds. And the one that I've chosen is the Korain. I'm not sure how you pronounce this one. Uh, but what you basically get here is uh, Wild Hunt Tactics. And then you get First Strike. The cool thing about First Strike here is that you can actually keep refreshing it. If you Chain Pool or even if you if you just like... Uh, let's say that you just hit like a single mob with like Solar Ref. And then after that you could like extend it by, by using Sunfire. While you have this buff here, if you can get your Convoke the Spirits off uh, within those 5 seconds, then it can do a large amount of damage. But this, this is some like super min-maxing stuff, like this is not something that you need to like like try and aim for to do like every time you, you pop Convoke the Spirits and stuff. But it's just like uh, a nice, nice amount of crit to get. Let's talk a bit about the Conduits. There is uh, Endurance, Finesse and Potency. So let's talk about the Endurance first. The first one, uh, the first conduit I would recommend you to pick is Tough as a Bark because it reduces your cooldown of Bark Skin by 10%, which is very useful. And the second one is going to be Init Resolve. The only reason why I picked this one is because of the 12% benefit you get from Regrowth. So the third one would be Ursine Viger. I don't really see myself going much into bear form, so uh, this one is it's not something that I would pick, but. It's up to you, like yeah, I, I don't really find many places where I actually need to go into bear form, so... Tough as a bark, in it resolve, that's what you should go for. The second conduit we're gonna talk about is gonna be Finesse. And there's not really too many options in this one, so the first one I would recommend is uh, Front of the Pack. Which is gonna increase the Stampeding Roar's radius and duration by 15%. You might look a little bit like a simp uh, to the group here, but there is a lot of dungeons where you need to run a lot, so this could really save you some time. Um, the second one would be if you're a little bit more selfish and you just want to do uh, a bit more damage with Heart of the Wild, then you can say Born of the Wilds to reduce the cooldown of uh, Heart of the Wild, Mass Entanglement and uh, Mighty Bash as well by 10%. Personally, I just use Front of the Pack here. So now for the last conduit. This one is where you really feel the benefits. This is the potency, and the first one I would recommend you taking is Flesh of Clarity. This one increased um, the healing that your clear casting regrowth does by 20%. And since you, uh, you're not always just spam healing, so like when you're in uh, chicken form or a cat form, then whenever you go back into healing, then most likely you will have uh, a clear cast available. So this one is big, big benefits. The second one I would recommend is Floral uh, Recycling. It basically just increases your Swiftment healing um, by 40% of the consumed heal over time effect. And what this means is like basically now the Swiftment is a bit different. Uh, so in BFA for example it didn't actually uh, consume uh, hot in order to, to cast Swiftment. But this is what it does here in, uh, in Shadowlands. So this is what, what it means. The third one would be ready for anything. And this one just reduced the cooldown of Nature Swiftment by 10%. So by Nature Swiftment, you can basically use like uh, you can use this for like uh, Insta Regrowth or like Insta Combat Rest, for example. Uh, this one would be the third pick, though. The first one for sure, Flash of Clarity. Okay, so now over to the legendaries, and one I actually found myself liking a lot is Memory of the Mother Tree. So what this one does basically is that Wild Growth has 40% chance to cause your next rejuvenation or regrowth to apply to three additional targets uh, within 20 yards. So the cool thing about this one here is that the regrowth heal, it's not only the, the healing over time effect, you actually get the initial heal of the regrowth effect as well. So it is a heavy, uh, a heavy boost uh, in healing whenever this procs. But you can see here on this Prideful mod, for example, I, I proc it twice. 
but this is completely RNG. It could also be that I didn't proc it and then I wouldn't benefit from it at all. But it is very nice, like um, like whenever you just want to like top your, your party just a little bit, you give a, a wild growth and um, if you get a proc, then you could, for example, use rejuvenation and everybody will slowly get topped instead of you having to like use rejuvenation on every single party member. Um, so it definitely could save you a lot of global cooldowns over the whole uh, dungeon. The next one will be the Dark Titans lesson, and this one makes you able to put out two life blooms on your party. And if you have the talent photosynthesis, then this is a big value. However, it can also feel a little bit clunky, because if you want to try and keep up the two life blooms, and you want to keep up additional huts, I can find it a little bit hard to like go in and out of boomkin forms all the time, because it seems like you don't get too much damage off before you need to go out and, and apply both life bloom again. If you decide to play with this one here, then you don't need to rely on the RNG as you do on Memory of the Mother Tree. So the third legendary would be Circle of Life and Death. And this one basically does so that your damage over time effect deal a damage in 25% less time and your healing over time effect in 15% less time. So this could bring pretty big value to uh, Feral Affinity because you have two additional uh, dots compared to Balance Affinity. In Balance Affinity, you only have Sunfire and Moonfire, but as Feral Affinity, you have uh, Sunfire, Moonfire, Rip, and Rake. But I nearly feel like you could do more damage if you play Memory of the Mother Tree with Balance Affinity, for example, because then all the globals that you save on uh, the rejuvenations, like all the global cooldowns you save on the rejuvenation and regrowths, you could have used for damage instead. So I feel like at the moment, I, I feel like Memory of the Mother Tree is the go-to legendary for me, at least. Let's have a look at the consumables. And the uh, first thing is, of course, the flask. And for the flask, you're gonna use Spectral Flask of Power. And what this basically does is just, it gives you your primary stats. So let's say that you play Resident, you'll get Insulate. If you swap over to uh, Field Root, then you will automatically get Agility instead. So you use the same flask no matter what. So next up, we have Potion of Phantom Fire. And this is pretty much just like Unbridled Fury in BFA. And there's some, uh, there's some oils you can use in Shell Ants, and the potion here will benefit 10% more if you use these kind of oils. Then we also have Potion of Spectral Intellect, which is just like a, just like a normal intellect potion. And this could be good if you, are, like, if, if you need to heal, but you also want to do damage at the same time, then this, this could be a solid solution to do that. Then we have the little bit more boring stuff here. We have the Healing Potion and the Mana Potion. And as you probably know, then the healing potion does not share cooldown with other potions, but the mana potion will share cooldown with, for example, the intellect potion or uh, the fence and fire potion. During the time I played beta here on my Resident I have not had to use a single mana potion yet, because we have the prideful ethics, which uh, gives you pretty much full mana after you kill the prideful mob, and then you have uh, innovate as well in case you need it. When it comes to the food you want to consume, then you should get the haste buff, as you know uh, what I talked about earlier with the stats. You want to go for haste. Uh, this one is called Tenebrous Crown Roast Aspic. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Uh, and then for drinking for mana, if you don't want to drink this every time you need mana, you could do that, but that's maybe going to be expensive. Uh, then you could buy candied amberjack cake cakes or if you're so lucky to have a mage in your group you could just use the mage food basically when it comes to the healing rotation then th there's no real rotation that like you can write in stone but um there's like a few rules that you you can try and remember <clears throat> basically try and keep the life bloom up at all times so keep it on either the tank or yourself like you keep it on the tank if uh if it's like heavy tank damage but if it's like heavy AoE damage, let's say you, you're fighting the Prideful mob or a boss is about to do some AoE damage, then you could put Life Bloom on yourself so that the hot takes faster. With that being said though, you don't have to have exactly 100% uptime on Life Bloom. Like it doesn't matter if Life Bloom is gone for like, let's say five seconds or something because you're in Boom Conform doing damage. Then when you get out of Boom Conform, then of course you just reapply the Life Bloom. You shouldn't think like, uh, oh, now I need to uh, quickly get out of uh, boom conform to, to uh, reapply the life bloom because I need 100% uptime. That, that's not necessary. Scenarium Ward is a heal that you just use whenever you have it, basically. It's a 30 second cooldown and you just pop it whenever you have it. It's nothing you should really hold. Um, Swiftment is also something you, you should pretty much just pop whenever you have it. Of course, you, you can hold it for a bit, but uh, since we play Soul of a Forest, just use it more frequently than, than if you didn't. 
since uh, Resolute is a proactive healer, then you kind of need to like learn the dungeons a bit, and then you will get more comfortable uh, like like not applying as many huts uh, in certain scenarios of the dungeon. And then if you know there's like heavy AOE incoming, then then you just need to like pre hut the whole party basically. So there's there's not like a, a set rotation for rest Druid that you, you can you can throw out there. And remember to put your efflorescence down because it helps a lot when you have spring blossom as well because the spring blossom counts towards your mastery. So by doing this you get a, a lot of extra healing. So for the damage rotation, if you're playing balance affinity, that would be if you go into a pack, you star search, then you sunfire, and then you do two solar ref in order to proc your eclipse for starfire. You can see the tracker down here. And then basically you spam Starfire. And then whenever the Eclipse for Starfire is, is running out, then uh, it will proc the the Solar um, Eclipse, which is basically the Eclipse for, for your Wrath ability. But if you have two targets or more, it's actually not worth using Solar Wrath, even though you're procking the Eclipse. So then you just keep on spamming um, Starfire. And then whenever you can 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 proc uh, the solar eclipse again, then you just uh, you just do two ref in the end of that, and then you proc the starfire ref again. So you only do the ref in order to uh, to actually proc the starfire eclipse. It sounds a little bit more complicated than it actually is, but uh, as you can see, the two bars I have down here above my mana bar, that is basically tracking which eclipse is going to be next and what abilities I need to use for it. Let's say that you're about to approach a boss and you want to pump some single attack damage. So then you use Star Search, you use Sunfire, Moonfire, Double Ref, and then you can use Convoke the Spirits. The cool thing about Convoke the, uh, Convoke the Spirits is that um, even though your Star Search is on cooldown, it can still be used while casting Convoke the Spirits. So by getting uh, rid of your Star Search already before you use Convoke the Spirits, then it, it's already refreshing the cooldown and then it's nearly ready to, to shoot already after uh, Convoke the Spirit again. The reason why you want to proc your Eclipse right before you use Convoke the Spirit is because uh, then in Convoke the Spirit, if you cast like a ton of Starfires and stuff, then you're just going to do like a lot more damage. You cannot 100% control Convoke the Spirits. Like if there is many targets to shoot at then even though you you set your target at the boss for example let's say it spawns like some ads or something then convoke the spirits will most likely also shoot at these ads here so all your damage will not go into the boss if you decide that you want to give kitty weave a shot then what it's all about is basically like like let's say you go single target here you go stealth you're gonna start out with a rake then you do rip and then sunfire moonfire and basically, you just want to try and keep all these uh, dots up at all time, because this is what's going to give Fuel, um, Fuel Affinity a, a nice amount of damage. If you find yourself having too many combo points, and uh, you already have all your bleeds up and stuff, then you're just going to use the leftover combo points for Ferocious Bite. Uh, whenever you apply Rip, it doesn't matter if you apply it with uh, one combo point or five combo points. It does the same damage, the only thing it's going to change is basically the duration, depending on how many combo points you use on it. So if you're going into an AoE pack like this, like three mobs, then you just use Sunfire and then um, you just start swiping. Whenever you have enough combo points, then you can use Rip and then you just start swiping again. If there's a main target, you can use Rake as well. And uh, I would say if there's two targets, then I would consider using Moonfire on them as well. Uh, but if there's three targets, I would not even bother using Moonfire here. I would just swipe, Rip, and if there's main target, you can Rake as well. Okay, so the very last thing I want to talk about is CD tracking. And I'm not only talking about tracking your own CDs, but also your party member CDs, because this can actually help you a lot in a lot of situations. Um, and it, it doesn't really matter if you are pucking or if you're playing with a pre-made group. It will help you a lot in both cases. Um, but also tracking your own personal cooldowns definitely helps a lot. And getting regards that will show you like procs, for example, like of um, like memory of the mother tree. You can see if you uh, if you use a wild growth, if you get the proc, so you don't actually have to like look up at your buffs and stuff like that. So so definitely um, tracking your own CDs with Vigaros, they help a lot. Like I, I cannot even imagine playing without Vigaros anymore. Uh, but I know some of you guys do, and that that is also completely fine. You can also get some Vigaros that actually show the incoming damage on your party member, so it will show on top of the party frame. This is one that I use a lot, so so you know 
if if uh, if some heavy damage is incoming, then you can just quickly back them, or you can like precast your healing already. I will link that down in the description because uh, this is not one I have created myself. Uh, all my Vigaros and uh, like UI will be available for my patrons or my Twitch subs. Okay, so this is a really good example. I can see here that the mage has ice block available, and he's going in for the soak. So that means. Ice block is available. I don't need to spend time like pre hotting him and stuff because there's no other damage happening here at this boss. So I decided not to give him any healing and just trust him. And if he dies, then it's basically just him who misplayed, you know? So that's not your fault. Okay, guys, so that's basically it for this guide here. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I know I could have went a bit more in depth with like the different things, but the video would just be way too long in my opinion. And uh, that could be something we do in the future, maybe. So if you liked the video, feel free to throw a like, maybe subscribe. If you, if you didn't like the video, throw the dislike. And um, we have a Discord channel and uh, I'm streaming on Twitch nearly every day. At least I do in the weekdays, Monday to Friday, uh, normally in the morning, Central European time. Uh, but if you want to join the Discord, feel free. You can ask questions, even though I'm not streaming, I will be answering. So until then, see you next time, boys.